Hey. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So I think there's some issue with my laptop Zoom. Okay. So I just gonna use okay. my phone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is okay. Get Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry about the Zoom issue. I sorry. I wasn't checking my WhatsApp. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's not. I don't know what's going on. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us today. Maybe I'll I'll do a quick introduction and then. We would love to hear, uh, maybe, maybe Hang Hong, I was thinking the way we can structure this is that um, I can do a quick introduction and then you can tell us a little bit about your story in maybe five, five ish minutes. And then we can open it up to questions so that students can ask and, and uh, focus on the things that they want to hear about. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, awesome. Cool. So today we're super lucky and excited to welcome Hang Hong. Hang Hong is currently Director of Engineering at Xworld, as, as everyone knows, I shared your LinkedIn before before uh, before we started. And Hang On was previously a software engineer at Facebook in, in the US. He worked there on the early messenger team for about five to six years. And interestingly about Hang Hong is that he did not study computer science in uni. He went to NUS, Singaporean, studied electrical engineering, graduated in around 2011, and then Worked at a, picked up iOS programming on his own and worked at several iOS companies and gaming companies before moving to the US to join Facebook. So Hang On has a, a, a journey that is more similar to ours, I guess, than, than university CS grads. And super excited to hear from Hang Hong about his journey and how he got and how he's got to where he is today, as well as what he's looking forward to achieving at Xverse and in general with the Singapore tech ecosystem. Yeah, all right, nice. Uh, Thanks, so, so yeah, you've mostly covered like, you know, most of the, the stuff that I, I like career journey, I guess, like, hmm. for, I, I didn't really like we prepare for any of these, but like, I think hmm. maybe you can cover, Taiyun can cover a bit of like what we would like to come achieve out of the session, like, you know, hmm. um, and then we yeah. can like go from there. So I think, it, I think in general, what most of the, so Rocket Academy is a coding bootcamp. And so, um, yeah, maybe, oh yeah, yeah, good point. Let me, let, me, let me just introduce you real quick to the students here so you get a better sense of who, who's around. So we have two batches of students here. Rocket Academy runs a six month coding bootcamp and a new batch starts every three months. And so there are two batches here today. There are roughly four to five students per batch here. And the the most the more senior batch is in the second half of the course now and they're going to start applying for jobs say in march to april period and and the second batch they recently started just two weeks ago and so they're they have a almost six month journey ahead of them and they're they're just trying to get warmed up and understand them, understand more about the industry and where they can fit in where they can start applying in a few months and pretty much everybody here is a career switcher I would say, yeah, the majority are either recent grads or have worked for a few years and nobody studied CS. Most people, people studied a whole variety of topics from mechanical engineering to psychology to poli sci to accounting. And some, some one of us here has even recently ORD and he's about to enroll in NUSCS, so he's a bit, a bit different. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, people have been working in, in different areas. We have one person who actually couldn't make it today, but she's been in the horse riding industry for 20 years and is switching to tech and software engineer. And so I think what would be helpful for people to hear is more around how you approached your career switch to, to be a programmer and then your experiences along the journey and how that might differ from someone who was a CS grad, for example, and might have had it easier mm. in that sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That that sounds that sounds fun. Uh, to talk about. Um, I think part of uh, so so like like Kain mentioned. I think, I guess hi hi everybody. Um, but like as Kain mentioned, I I didn't actually graduate in computer science, right? Like um, but I mean that didn't stop me from like you know doing computer science stuff. Like I just wanted to like when I was in I think year three. Um, there was this cool new thing. iPhone came out like. That's how long ago, like I was in school, and then it's like, oh yeah, it's this new iPhone thing, right? Like they're doing the iPod Touch for like a bunch of years, and then now they they made it into a phone, right? And then, uh, they had this developer 
page. And that time developer um, ecosystems were not very big, right? Like they were the ones who kind of like invented developer ecosystems with the app store and stuff like that. So like at that, at that point, the, the first few games were like Trizzle, like those kind of like Tetris-like games that can, you know, connect three things and then they explode and, and then things fall down. Um, and, you know, there was this video that, you know, people like watch the video and it's like, oh, this guy was a developer, you know, he, he built this game and then this game launched to like hundred thousands of people. And then I felt like that was quite convincing. So I was like decided that I wanted to do um, um, programming in, in, in iOS, right, in iPhone. Um, and, but what I learned in school was really not super aligned to that. Um, basically, I did electrical engineering, which is a lot of like, uh, control systems and like you know body plot like you know integrations and stuff like that very technical and very mathematical um, and but I did do uh, CS uh, 1102 and 1101 which is the C, C and C++ modules um, in school right so at least I mean those that, that was my first interaction or first few interactions with you know uh, computer science in general and learning about you know, data structures and algorithms. Like some, some, and there's some things that like are better thought to you and there's some things that are better learned yourself, right? Like, and once really you have the, the right basis, the right base, like maybe here at Rocket Academy, you, you learn some like more of the things that should be taught to you, then um, you can go along and, you know, learn the things that you are interested to learn and just learn it yourself, right? Nobody taught me how to do uh, iOS. I just opened the book, opened the website, I just read everything is online, right? You just need to help yourself. Um, and then I was copy and pasting code all the way. Uh, that was not the good way to do it, but like, you know, I was copy and pasting code most of the time until I actually got like my first game up. I didn't even know what like JSON is. I didn't know how to transfer things around. So I wanted to build a, a game like, which um, it's like called, it's Volifier, like an old remake of like the old Game Boy game called Volifier on, on the iPhone. And so that was uh, something that I wanted to make it like P2P playing. But so, so that was the, like the very beginning of like how I built it. And I, um, I, I remember very clearly there was a point where you need to pay to become a developer, right? Like, um, and like you need to pay like a hundred US dollars, right? And, and at the time I don't really have a hundred US dollars, right? But, you know, I had a hundred US dollars, but I didn't really think that I would need to spend a hundred US dollars to deploy my game, right? Apple is pretty much a bitch. Um, but the, <laughs> so like you, so I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to earn the money back. But I never did, right? Like, but it's, it, it taught me a very important lesson, right? Like that you really have to go and, you know, get those opportunities. Sometimes you need to pay to get the opportunities, right? Sometimes you need to, you know, go, um, you, you, you should not let, like, let's say today it's like, okay, I think Oculus Reef is cool. Right, I, I want to do that. Like you have to pay to buy that thing and then you can do it, right? So you, you, have, to, you have to start somewhere and then um, it, will, it, will, it will hopefully, uh, if, you, if you like it, you should, you should you know, invest in yourself, right? In, in this case, you do it in monetary sense. And so, yeah, I did iPhone. I graduated electrical engineer um, and I went to interview at all the electrical engineering jobs, but I didn't really like them. So um, I decided, okay, I want to do computer science. I want to, I want to make, iPhone stuff, right? Like, I don't even think I wanted to do computer science, but I just wanted to build products uh, for iPhone. So I like, um, I first joined a consultancy company, kind of like those kind of like build apps for folks. And then um, basically what that was, was really giving me the exposure to like, say, you know, build a, a whole bunch of different apps, right? Um, and I built a whole bunch of different apps in the not so good way. And then every time I build a new app, like you'll be better than the previous one, but still, you know, uh, not as good because pretty much I was teaching myself, right? I was like, no, like at the start, I didn't even have like, you know, source control. Like I didn't know what source control was or source control. And so then, then I realized that I just commented code and then I just moved and, and working without source control is fast, but it gets messy very, very quickly. Uh, then uh, I didn't write tests. I didn't, I didn't think I need tests. Uh, but I realized that I was always fighting against, you know, the me from two months ago or two weeks ago, even sometimes, right? And um, that's, that's when you need like all the source control and all the testing and stuff. And, and so I learned everything pretty much by myself because the, the place that I joined didn't really have 
developers. At that time, really, software development was not very new. It was very new. And there was not many people. And especially in iOS like or I, like mobile development in general, you can't find a team that is more than five people. Right, there's at most two to three people doing mobile apps, and now I think still, uh, pretty much the same. Unless you join like a big ish company, you know, Carousel probably has like a whole bunch of people doing like mobile, right? So, um, I went from the 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 consultancy company, which is like the kind of like the sweatshop kind of like kind of thing, and then we that closed down, right? Like they 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 shut down, um, and then um, I went to do um Unity games right so like I, I switched over from doing iphone to doing unity but um i still spend most of my after work times building like iphone apps um well but during work time i would build um unity games which is like educational unity games so unity is like c sharp and then you like basically program like okay but in the in the in my um after work times, I, I actually built uh, two apps. So like even during my first job, I was building like apps for fun in the in my free time. So the, the first app I built was uh, is, is a climbing um, Instagram, right? Like so uh, at that time, Instagram was very popular. It got sold to Facebook for like, you know, how much money? A billion dollars. <laughs> that was actually very little. Uh, but <laughs> the, 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 I built a climbing kind of Instagram where you can share photos or routes that you've climbed before, right? And then uh, I worked on that for a bit on, on my own and then like released it and then had my friends download it and, and use it, right? I didn't go very far and then decided, okay, yeah, it's addressable market is not very big. So I decided in my next project, like my next side project, I built a food app, right? Like I like everybody wants to build a food app in Singapore, like that's like super common, <laughs> but uh, uh, at that time, like, you know, we had like, I think purple and I was like already built, but I was, th I was thinking, okay, let me build something that can answer the question. And it's very specific. It wants to answer the question of what is the best food around me and what's blocked, what's blocked about um, near me, right? Like who has written a blog about some food near me? So that was the question uh, that, that, that app wanted to answer. So I crawled all the food blocks and then I, I kind of try, try to figure out where they're talking about, like what kind of food it is, and then you know plot that on a map in you know, an iPhone app. So, so that was the, the project that I was working on. So after working a couple of years, and now this is like a couple of years, then I kind of like um I had a few friends that were working in the US. And so it was like, ah, I just come over to the US and live here for like three months and stuff, right? And find a job. So I was like, yeah, okay, you yeah, know, why not? Uh so I so I decided after a year working in the Unity place, I left um, and then I went to the US to look for a job. And then I had a, I, I mean, I had a good idea that like, you know, iPhone at that time was very popular, right? It's kind of like the machine learning of today or like the data science of today, right? That was the mobile of the, of the past. Um, and it was popular because everybody wanted to do uh, an iPhone app or Android app and stuff like that. And so, um, I went to the US and then while, while I was there, I was interviewing with a whole bunch of different companies. Uh, I actually got offer also from uh, not just Facebook, but uh, Pebble, the Pebble Watch app. And yeah, it's pretty nice. Like America is a very cool place. Like it's, it's a different kind of air around it. Yeah. And uh, I, I worked at the Pebble office for like, you know, uh, two, two months. And then while I was interviewing and I was actually like kind of illegally working there, right, like, um, because you're not supposed to work on a travel visa, right, and then um, after that, I got, I, I interviewed at Facebook, and then they were like, oh, yeah, I, I should, I should, uh, they, they, they somehow hired me, right, um, and yeah, there's an interesting story at the interview at Facebook, and then um, I got the job at Facebook, and then, yeah, I came, came back to Singapore, got my visa, and went over and yeah, then stayed there for four, four years. I think there, there are a few interesting insights on like, you know, um, interviewing at Facebook, the one thing, the, the fun story around that. And then like Facebook itself as an experience, right? Facebook itself as an experience was really a very big like eye opener for me. And it's also the reason why I kind of like, you know, want to do the stuff that I do right now in terms of like, how can I get 
more opportunities to the folks that are like you guys, right? Like not computer science or like we're just good, but we're not there yet, right? Like we don't have the right opportunities um, to get there. But some of you, like, you know, some of the people might not be good, right? They, they just, um, even if you give them the opportunities, they might not be good. But for those that have the opportunity, like for those that are good and don't have the opportunities, we need to, you know, we need to bring, like, we need to make it accessible for them to, to get the opportunities. Like, yeah, it, people might not have the chance to work at Facebook and stuff. And, and sometimes it's all luck, right? Like, you get to pass the interview and stuff. And so part of the stuff that I try to do today is to, you know, um, bring bring opportunities to folks and connect them with people and, you know, um, help, you know, young engineers and um, generally, like, the, the, the folks that I, I mean, it doesn't matter either your computer science, not computer science, um, just, you know, bringing opportunities to more um, uh, folks like, like you guys. And, and also share, share some of the, what I think is more important um, characteristics of software engineers in Southeast Asia. Like, it's, it's a little bit different how, how, how it works here and how it works in the US. And, you know, some, some things work well. Um, and so um, there, there's, a, there's a bunch uh, of tips here that maybe we'll cover on later. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So yeah, Ian, maybe throw me some that's questions awesome. and yeah, we can. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, it's all you guys, go, go for it. <laughs> Maybe I can start. Yeah, so what, what was the story? What was the interesting story at Facebook? Oh yeah. The oh yeah, this this there's a there was an interview. So so Facebook interview is quite long, right? Like it's uh it's two um on uh, on, uh phone screens, right? Actually one, but two if you don't do that well. Uh so I did two phone screens and then I did uh um and, and after two phone screens they'll 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 send they'll bring you over. So it's like bring you on board, they'll literally fly you to the US. Um, and then you'll have an, an on-site. And the on-site consists of four interviews, four interviews, two, two coding interviews, and a design interview. And then at the end is a, a culture fit interview, right? Um, and during the culture fit interview, if you are too junior, they'll just ask you also another programming question, right? So uh, that's what happened to me when uh, I was there, uh, when the guy was like ask, finished asking me all the culture fit questions. They were like, oh yeah, you know, why do you leave your last job? What, what do you think your last job did well, did not well? You know, what are some of the things that you, you, you would like to see better in your next job? Something like that, right? And then I finished all those questions and, and you know, we decided to do a coding question. And then this guy said, you know, um, it's the last question for your day. Let me, you know, I, I, we know you're tired. You've been here for like the whole day already. Um, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, give you something simple to uh, a simple coding question, right? And then I was like, yeah, you know, uh, don't like, dude, I, I, I studied for this. Just give me the hard one, right? Like I, I, I did study wow. for this, you know, but I, I didn't put it around, across as a more like a arrogance, but more of like, you know, I, I like, let me give me my best shot, right? Like, you know, let just, just don't, don't give me the easy one. Just let me, let me, let me fail. Let me fail on this side. Right. So, so I guess that that was like really, so like, okay. Yeah. You know, I like this guy, like, you know, game on, right? Like, let's just, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. Like you just jump into the deep end of the pool um, and, and, you know, get it. And, and I think that, that really definitely helped like, I think in, in giving a good impression on like, you know, that that's the kind of people that I would hire, right? Like there's a strong hiring signal for me. If I like right now, if you're looking back, if I see somebody like that, I'll, it's a strong hiring signal for me, right? Like we, we don't need people who are like too super smart. Like it's not rocket science. This is just computer science. It's a very simple one. <laughs> we need people who are, you know, willing to do the work, willing to learn and always having the beginner's mind, right? I think beginner's mind is a uh, very important um, that even if you learn, you need to have the energy and you need to, you know, have the beginner's mind. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's a... <laughs> I think well, I have a question. My name is Kendrick. Uh, well, my question okay. for you is, uh, generally you mentioned on the differences working in Southeast Asia, you, you, you also worked in the US and also in Singapore, I guess. Can you like share some like uh, differences? Cause I'm also looking to uh, move overseas uh, or maybe work in different countries. So like what are some like cultural factors that we need to take? Not really cultural factors, but more like differences with the US teams and with the Singapore teams. Mm. Um, I think 
what I learned in the US is very effective here in Singapore. Um, and what um, th the Singapore psyche is very like if you're Singaporean, you will know, right? Like it, it is a little bit conservative, but yet a little bit like um, US centric. Like we, we like people who are assertive, we like people who, who have ideas and, and talk about it. Um, but we tend to not excel in getting ourselves there. Right. The Americans, on the other hand, do it very well. Like they make you into a more like you, you are able to properly voice your views there, and and it's self-selecting, of course, right? Like, so if you go to the US, like you end up, you know, building this character that you know, um, you think things through, and like you you're really solid on what you're saying, right? You kind of like you almost. I think I would say that a lesson learned when I was at Facebook was that you almost fail if you don't um, do things properly. At, at a big company like Facebook, right? Like you, you have to do your software engineering good. You have to, you have, you have to do it such that like people will say that yeah, Hong Kong is good. I will work with him, you know. Um, and because these folks, they will just say that they don't like working with you if you are not good, right? And there's not, nothing wrong with that, right? Like it's like, yeah, he's a nice guy, but you know, I don't like working with him. He's not the best at software engineering, right? Um, and there's X, Y, Z, and A, B, C that he needs to improve. Right? They'll tell their manager that easily. And then your manager, the, their manager is your manager. And, and so the manager is going to tell it to you. And the way that the HR and the system works is very beneficial for your, for, for your personal growth. Right? So your manager will come to you and say, I mean, of course, you'll repackage it nicely and say, oh, yeah, I realized X, Y, Z, uh, you haven't been doing well. And these are the reasons why you know, um, people are saying, or like, you know, they're, they're, they're I've heard that you know these are the things that you can improve on, right? So you you should improve on them, right? So um, in Singapore, coming back to Singapore, I feel like you know people want that, but uh, they they're still in the more conservative stage and like you know um, less of the confrontational um, and like strong opinions held like loosely and those kind of stuff, right? So those are stuff that we need to grow. We, it's 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 an opinion. Um, that maybe we should get there, maybe we shouldn't, right? So the principles of like, you know, um, culture in Singapore is different from that in America. So I'm reading this book called The Culture Map, and maybe you've heard of it. Um, and it, 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 it actually a very interesting book if you are interested in this topic that um, you can, um, they map out, you know, a different country cultures in, into like a, a, a different um, aspects and which ones are strong in which. And yeah, definitely check that out if you're interested. Yeah. Hi, uh, Thank you. Home. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From Hi. what I would like just I would just like to summarize like the main point that you're trying to put across. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. Do you mean that in US the culture is very open so that uh coworkers can kind of provide feedback of on their own uh of their colleagues to tell their colleagues or where they can improve in a constructive manner. But whereas compared to in Singapore, uh, colleagues are not so are afraid of voicing out their, the, are afraid to point out their co-workers' flaws. Uh, so there's less room to know where, where you are lacking. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. So well, well, I want to say that it is also a bit nuanced, right? Like you can't say that, okay, Singaporeans don't like that, right? Like that's not accurate particularly. There are some that would be good, right? So uh, it's the tendency of le less of the confrontational and yeah, yeah definitely right to like say, let's say if you want to generalize it, I think, yeah, you'll be accurate. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hi, Heng Hong. Uh, my name is Jikon. Um so I just wanted to ask, like, uh, what, what do you think are some of the most pivotal moments in your career so far? I mean, I think Facebook is definitely one of the biggest or most life-changing moments of your life. So, but I'm also very curious to hear, like, if there's any other pivotal moments in your life, be it, like, successes or setbacks. And for setbacks, like, you know, what are those and how do you overcome them? Yeah. Mm, okay, so... I would say that most of like my career part, right? Like most of the setbacks um, uh, in, I, I would say within Facebook itself, right? Like that there's, it's not a smooth sailing journey 
in Facebook itself. Um, outside of Facebook, before, before I go into that one, uh, outside of Facebook, back in Singapore is mostly about, you know, learning and trying to contribute. And, and that in itself, it's also complicated, right? Like not complicated, but like challenging, right? Um, so in, in Facebook itself, like it, it wasn't, it didn't start off like, um, I mean, it's not clear how, how applicable this might be for you guys, but like de definitely a good story. Uh, when, when I first started off, it's mostly like, you know, wow, this is so cool. Everything is like, wow, Facebook, everything is, people is using this product. And I'm always eager to jump onto anything and everything, right? And, and try to build a solution that kind of works, right? But like I realized maybe like a half a year or a year in that kind of works doesn't cut it at a big company like Facebook, right? Because I ended up building more stuff that did not work well and, and was causing bugs and, and I had to fix bugs and causing bugs I had to fix bugs um, for me, which is uh, a very big uh, problem like, um, because I spend most of my time fixing stuff instead of creating new stuff, right? Um, and, and that really caught me into a, a rut um, at that time. Right. And, and so um, that was maybe like the first six months or a year when, when I was at Facebook. Um, but after that, like I decided that, okay, fuck this, like I need to change um, my strategy. Right. So I, I kind of like figured out that this was the problem that I was like, you know, building on stuff that I didn't really understand fully. I mean, I thought I understood it fully, but I actually don't. Um, and then I decided to, you know, pivot into. Um, uh, I did one half uh, where I actually told myself that I would understand everything that I was doing. Like every single line of code had to have a reason. Every single uh, decision that I made had to have a reason. I had to had to think about it, right? And and that was really a big change for me. I I I, I came up with this strategy, which I which I highly encourage people to do. Also, is that I stopped using words like I think maybe. I, I stopped using all these words that like, you know, could show that I, I actually didn't understand. And when I catch myself saying those words, I, I, I know that, okay, yeah, Hing Hong, you don't really understand this. So you better go and learn some more, right? So if, if you say something like, oh, I think that this is because of that, right? That, that just means that you didn't understand it enough. So um, of course you will never know everything, but like you, you will want to put in more effort in places where you, you are saying like, I think I, I maybe, you know, um, and, and that not just improved um, me as a, as an engineer in terms of knowing the stuff, I knew that I, I, I knew that with that, I did enough work to lay a very good foundation to know that whatever new things that I add was, was broken because of the new thing instead of the, something that has been existing and, and underlying, right? So a lot of that really helped me in terms of building my career. And, and from then on, I really, my career really be able to, was able to be accelerated. And, and then I can, I can, yeah, I could get exceeds expectations like constant, consistently over the next few halves, right? Uh, previously, I was just like meeting expectations and then like, you can't just meet expectations um, at Facebook. Yeah, you, you, you have a time limit. Um, yeah, so like, uh, that really um, was, was very useful in terms of like, you need to be able to um, understand what you're doing. Um, at least at a big company, that is a very important skill because if like we want to, to, to build foundations and, and so we can build on top of those foundations. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot. Hi, Hengu and Rina here. So, yeah, I just am um, curious that what inspired you to come back to Singapore uh, of um, leaving Facebook? Um, yeah. So, and um, and how easy was that decision to take that decision? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, coming back to Singapore is mostly like, you know, a planned thing. Um, I decided that, okay, you know, I'll be working at Facebook for like four to five years and then I'll come back. To, to Singapore like I decided that like you know when I actually got the offer so like, oh yeah you know work there for a few years and then come back to Singapore like my parents are here my family's here so you know being in Singapore is something like that I want to come back to right um a lot of people actually you know have that mentality okay okay I want to come back to Singapore someday but um then the next part is really the challenges of coming back to Singapore right and like I didn't realize it then but like 
like I would say that like I'm like one of the first few people that come back to Singapore, um, not as an expat, right? Like I just returned to Singapore, right? right? So um, there are there are definitely people who are like you know expat into Singapore, um, um, but returning to Singapore has its own uh, bunch of challenges around like you know um, like get. I would say um, hmm. the wait. What was the exact question again? I I thought of something, but I forgot what it was. No, I was thinking, uh, how easy was it to take that decision to come back to Singapore? And again, you have to find a, a new job. Oh, okay. But yeah, the challenges right, right. you'll be facing, right? To me, actually, it wasn't quite a bad hard decision, right? Because. For me, I, I left Facebook on my own accord and then like my manager is like, oh yeah, when you decide to come back, just let me know. I'll just like, you know, let you back in. <laughs> like it is it's not a problem, right? For me, I was just like, go back to go back to US, right? And join back Facebook. Like that's fine. Like, so the safety net is there, right? Like it, it, a lot of people think that like, oh wow, you came back to Facebook, and sacrificed everything. Like that's not really true, right? Like I can always go back there, right? Uh, that, so the, the, the safety net is there. So I, I feel like, you know, a lot of times what I want to do when I'm back in Singapore is really not just provide opportunity to, to, to you guys, right? Like, and also like to people who want to return to Singapore, um, I want to be able to get enough information to tell them, you know, what's the realistic thing on the ground, right? Okay, okay, this is the problems that you'll be facing. You'll be, you know, working with engineers that might not have good software engineering experience. You might not go with people who are, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, they have these kind of problems and, um, these are the things that I should set them up for, like, right? Because like, if you ask me, you know, I've, I've been talking to some of the EDB folks and SGN folks, they're like, they always paint a good picture and that's their job, right? Like, and so um, I, I'm, I'm trying to bring the, the more uglier, bad, unpopular kind of parts of information to them as well, yeah. Thanks. Hey, cool. uh, actually, if, uh, two questions. Uh, first question is, uh, were there times where you felt like software engineering wasn't for you? Like, would be working at Facebook, like, or maybe at the start where you were coding games or working for the consultant company, you thought like, hey, maybe I'm not suited for this. Maybe I should give up and do something else. That's my first question. My next question is, uh, when you were, how, how do you prep for the Facebook interview? Maybe you could go through like a daily schedule of the things you did as well. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the, I don't know if I should provide you a value under value added answer for the first question. My my answer is no. Um, I, yeah. So I've never felt that I, it's boring. Yeah. It's just there's just so much stuff to learn, right? Okay. So let's do the second question first, right? So uh, prepping for the Facebook interview, not any different. I I okay. So after I joined Facebook right now, like I've done like hundreds and like I think about two hundred interviews interviewing other people right and I think from the perspective of the interviewer it's even more interesting than uh, from the perspective of the, the candidate right um, and the, the interviewer is there to help you right like you need to understand that like you know um, it's not so much about road memorization and more about like familiarity right like you need to practice that's for sure right like it's not like oh yeah you know I'm, I'm just going to go in and, you know, um, wing it, right? Like, unless you're super good, like, yeah, yeah, your brain spins very quickly. You need to do, um, you need practice, right? You need to practice a lot. And um, we are just basically generally practice a lot, uh, but not just practicing, you know, coding itself. I also, like, you know, had a lot of conversations around, like, just chatting coding thing, right? Like, like somebody, like, I had a friend who just, I was very lucky to, you know, when I was in the US, I had a friend that, you know, was at Google and he, he's very passionate about asking questions uh, for interviewing, right? So he just keep asking me, hey, Hong, you know, I have a question for you, right? And I say, yeah, okay, let's do it, right? Like, and, and it's really about like that mental exercise, like your, your brain needs to really be exercising and be able to come up with the first the first principle, right? It's, it's very standard, right? You come up with the simple naive solution and then you try to optimize the naive solution, right? So um, you have to be able to talk to yourself. It's very important to talk to yourself. I think there was an interview I did um, at Quora, right? I, I, I interviewed at Quora and then um, I 
I remember telling, uh, he, he asked me a question, I completely don't know how to answer the question, right? And then I know that, so when, when I said, okay, uh, I said something to myself, I said something like, um, this is a tree problem, right? This is a recursive problem, so it must have a base case. And so I should start working on the base case first, right? I just spoke those words out without actually, you know, think like I just spoke those words out aloud and then that helped me you know, think that, okay, I should work on the base case first. Then I wrote the base case and then I heard from him, he said, ah, oh, that looks good as a base case. Then I was like, yeah, what? Well, I was on the right track. Right? <laughs> so like, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, after after that, I, I yeah, that, that was quite a quite a cool moment. Uh, but you, you really need to, you know, get into that, that, that groove for interviewing, yeah. Uh, hi, Heng Hong, uh, Zephaniah here. I got two questions. Um, firstly, what do you think it's uh, lacking in like current software engineers in terms of like knowledge or skills? And then the second one would be, what do you think is also lacking in the like tech industry in terms of solutions? Yeah, thank you. What, what do you mean solution again? Oh, I, right. Like for people who are thinking of maybe being an entrepreneur, what do you think that uh, some problems that need solving in the in the tech world right now okay um so the, the first part is around like what do you think makes a good software engineer right that's right right yeah sounds good. um i think especially for for folks on on this on this panel um really is about uh more, more one of the things that i i like watching i watched this video on like you know uh, who's that guy? Satya Nadala, right? The Microsoft guy. He was saying, um, can, what do you look for in new people, right? Like, there's two things that he looks for, right? Can you create clarity and can you create energy? I think that's super important, right? Like, clarity, like, you are, you are a fresh person, so you must use your freshness as your advantage, right? So what that means is that things must be built, like, computer science is not hard. Right. It's always the, 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 the lousy programmers that make a, a, a complicated system, right? I mean, of course, there, there'll be good programmers that make a good complicated system, but most systems have accidental complexity. And with a fresh perspective, you should say, hey, you know, why isn't this built just like that, right? Why is this built like this and not just as simple as that, right? So you need to keep asking yourself, how can I simplify this any further? Right? How can I simplify it so that it's easy for me to understand? Um, and draw it out or like, you know, do that, but always use that to your advantage, right? Like, can I make this better by simplifying it instead of, I understand the complex version and then I try to simplify it. People will thank you for doing that. And, and the next thing you need is energy, right? So in, in order for you to, to, to excel, you need to do a lot of stuff. You need to be um, energetic and you're always trying new things. Like things are going to fail, right? Like you just need to, um, and you you will as 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 people grow in their career they tend to try to optimize uh by not like doing more stuff right they're just like okay you know i want to just do comp like i, I want to make it uh, i want to do as little work as possible the right code and just one time and just goes in um but when when you're new you want to try as many things as possible and one of the things that i feel i would do when i was at facebook was that i would write the code and then like if somebody said, okay, you know, I don't really think you should do this, I would, I would, I would literally just implement what, like even if I disagree, I would implement what they wanted to. And then I will bring both solutions and then I'll show them accessibility. Um, if look at these two solutions side by side, I, I would prefer the left one or something like that, right? And and so the energy is very important. You need to always be um, trying out new things and and you know doing new things. And and I think if you some of the techniques that you can do to is is like um, making yourself a more effective engineer, right? Like this is book called The Effective Engineer. It says, you know, how do you, and you should definitely read that book, right? In, in terms of like, once you, um, when you join a company, you, you can read that book to kind of like, how can I shorten my response time? Like, how can I shorten my iterative time and make myself better, faster, right? Stuff like that. How do I optimize my time? How do I do all these things? So. The, the idea here is just to, you know, get yourself as productive as possible. And sometimes productivity means energy, but 
actually, in my, in my opinion, after coming back to Singapore, I feel like energy is energy. Productivity is productivity, right? You can be very productive and lazy, but like, you know, you can be um, very energetic, right? But not very efficient. Yeah. Thanks, Sing Hong. Uh, last question, I guess, from, or if there's someone else. So I wanted to ask you while you were developing, while you, you mentioned uh, starting out when you were working and then developing your own apps, like um, mm -hmm. what was your schedule like and what are some of the things that, uh, you know, you you built that you felt really helped you understand stuff better? I assume like those were moments where you really honed your craft. So I'm just wondering like how you uh, set time or like mm. any advice on on you know building side side projects yeah thanks yeah yeah, yeah. i mean okay side, side projects are fun like you like they have to be fun then you won't be able to do it um how i actually work is like i was working here right here at box anyone like i i i did um i worked till like 6 six thirty, and then I will go literally take my, at 6.30, I'll take my stuff and I'll go to the, the Starbucks there and then I'll get a coffee and then I'll do my side project until it's like 8.30. So I'll like spend two hours like every day just working on that. And then because anyway, if you go home at 6.30, there's a long line of people, MRT is crowded, everything, right? Like just like at that time, I was like, yeah, just, you know, work on this for like a couple of hours and, and it's fun, right? Like I was reading something, I was adding features to, I, I had, at, at that time, I had, I had something already, so I just adding features to it. And then weekends, I will like work on it. But I also like keep thinking about stuff and then, you know, implement that. I think at Facebook was like very different. Um, didn't really have side project, but like it was me, mainly working on still. Um, I, I actually really like the Messenger app, right? I really like working on Facebook products. So like that was a very different experience because like you don't mind working on your work after hours. Right. And it, it can be it can be a double edged sword, lah, but like yeah, we just sometimes on a Sunday morning or just like oh like let's do some work, you know, get coffee and you know sit at a cafe and do do a bit of work. Like it's it's real more like chill work, work right? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That's it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I was just wondering how you put in the time and I guess yeah, you, you did answer it by uh, I guess what, what it does, it really helps you to think of more more problems to keep your mind really sharp also. So yeah, thanks. Anybody talking? Is it? Okay. Oh, is you that I can't hear. Uh -huh. uh, can you hear us now? Hong Kong? I think I'm muted or something. Maybe hello, 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 hello. Hello. No. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. Somehow it went out of sound. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Sorry. I, I missed everything else after I. Jerome, started. you were saying? Oh, no. I was just saying. He, yeah. You, you did answer the question and, and how like it helps, like uh, what the, the effects of side projects and how that really helps uh, build some a very sharp mind. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Jeremy, did you have any questions? I know you're outside, but wanted to make sure you get a chance. Uh, yeah, actually, I was wondering, I mean, also related to the previous question, um, hi, hang on, by the way, I'm Jeremy. Um, I was wondering, what is your own personal system uh, for keeping up with uh, with technology? So now, like, you're kind of, like, done with the learning process, I guess, but, I mean, yeah, as you've also said, software engineering is, like, an ever-learning process, right? So it's good to kind of like, have a system to keep up. So what is your system, like? Yeah, I mean, my, my system, can you hear me? You can, right? Okay. Yeah. Um... My, my system is a bit um, changing, right? Definitely, I'm not done with the learning process. Like, once you admit that you're done with the learning process, that's the end of you. Um, but the, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of things to learn, and there's a whole bunch of things to improve. And, like, there's always a second layer, a meta thinking of the thinking, right? Like, uh, not just in engineering, it's also in management, right? There's, like, people are uh, even more complicated, and, and there will be more complex uh, underlying stuff that you need to learn right um podcast is my number one thing reading listening to books on like speed speed listening is actually another thing and i i mean things tend to evolve very quickly like just i just jump to a new method like one of the things i'm really trying very hard to kind of like do well or like even start doing um is like writing stuff right so like i i i, I 
I'm still trying to, you know, get into like, you know, a writing habit and, you know, getting that done. Um, I'm, I'm trying out like the, the slip note stuff, right? Trying to get, you know, my ideas linked to each other and, you know, using Notion maybe to, to manage that. And like, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I try to do and I keep trying to optimizing it. I don't think that um, there's ever an end to optimizing um, your work, but I think one of the biggest productivity hacks I would say would be, you know, listening to podcasts or like just listening to stuff in general. Um, that works very well for me. I don't actually listen to music that much. I just, every time I sit in the car, I just listen to something uh, that, you know, helps me um, think. La. Yeah. No, or like whatever's on my mind, right? Like, if, like, let's say I'm thinking of like, you know, investing like or something, I'll listen to a podcast on that and, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to improve. Yeah. Sounds like a very inquisitive person, which I guess it's, it's an important skill also. It's kind of fun, right? Like, yeah, it's just mostly about like, you know, I mean, you just learn about stuff that you like, right? Like, let's say today I'm like, the one to learn about like tr- training, like, you know, rock climbing or like, you know, physique or like eat better. Like, I'll try to optimize everything. And like, I think one of the most interesting things on like, you know, talking to people uh, is like, hey, you know, what's your productivity hack, right? Like everybody has their own productivity hack. Yeah, so yeah, that that's a good like fun. Yeah. Thank you. I remember when I was I was having one of my conversations with Hing Hong in the past, I Hing Hong mentioned something about also I guess in this vein of kind of the meta being a good programmer, Hing Hong was saying a good co- programmer is very thorough. Like you would just go all when you decide you are going to refactor something, you will go all the way and not just leave it half. I guess it's similar to your doing things halfway versus doing things completely point at the beginning. One of the biggest, one of the biggest points in my career was like when my first manager was like saying stuff like, um, you know, Hing Hong, like this, you know, I was very terrified of my first manager. She's, she's a, she is just very, very uh, fierce, right? She's been at Facebook for like 10 years. And then um, basically what she advocated for and she she asked the hard questions are uh, around like you know we want the confidence in, in in order for people to like working with you they need the confidence that you will deliver right like i give you one part it might be a big part it might be a small part but i trust that hey hong you will be able to deliver this and like it would have been as good or better than i've done it myself right like that's super important, right? That is all that matters actually, right? It's the level of trust that somebody has in you. And that level of trust can be built by like little techniques, like, you know, stop saying I think and maybe that builds very good trust because like the impression is that oh, yeah, Hing Hong doesn't, you know, think about so, like he just, you know, he, he knows everything, right? So the impression is super important and, and the results also super important. So you got to really do everything you need to, to achieve that and so people can treat you like a real, you know, this guy is reliable. I need to, I can, I can, you know, I can give him a big project. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that's the thoroughness. It's hiding behind, like, the thoroughness is also part of the recipe, right? Mm. That's awesome. All right. Before, anyone have any last questions? Great. Yeah. I guess to, um, oh yeah, go on. Yeah. Maybe just one last question. Uh, I'm not sure if, you answered this question just now, but when Jeremy was saying like how asking how how do you like keep up with like uh the advances in technology? I guess specifically um, to be updated on things that are relevant to your industry. Uh, do you uh specifically technically technical aspects like uh how to improve your code or using other technologies to make your job simpler. How do you hmm, how do you start learning those new technologies, I guess? Like where do you find those resources? That kind of stuff? Um, okay. So there, there's two parts. One part is the like totally like exploratory one, right? Like I don't know what I'm looking for and I'm just, you know, hanging out and seeing what's there. So generally, like podcasts, like I would listen to interesting stuff. Like I might interest listen to stuff on AI or machine learning. I don't do any of those, but 
just listen for fun, right? Like see what's, what, what's, what's happening on the like data side and stuff like that. And then there will be stuff that is tangential stuff, right? Like stuff that is kind of like adjacent, I mean adjacent, adjacent to what I am working on, right? Like so if I'm working on, let's say software engineering, like how to make, how to teach people better software engineering or how to make software engineering education better, right? I will be looking for books on that, looking for, you know, podcasts on that. And like tangentially, if I see something that is uh, adjacent to that, I will definitely pick it up, right? And and then those, there's stuff that I already know and I want to get better at, right? Those are the stuff that I will also, um, I would say that those are the same as the adjacent stuff. So when I mean adjacent, I mean like, really if i learn it i will use i will need to use it like i learn it so i use it right if i have no reason to use it i won't i i i have to make a reason to to to, to use it so that i can learn it yeah, yeah. it's like so it's like for example like the, the things that generally don't work out it's just stuff that i i end up not using right like let's say today i want to learn um rust programming right like i don't have a project I just learn the language, then I will forget it. Like it's useless for me, right? That's it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't get amalgamated into my my mental model, like in general. Yeah. Awesome. Before we end off for the day, Hang on, would you have any last advice or feedback for our group? Um, yeah, I think in general, it's an like exciting part. Like software engineering is great. Like. Um, made a good choice as always um it's the <laughs> career of the future i mean like i i, I was at facebook and i was telling my intern this like you know come on like you like you're living the life right like even i'm not living the life you're living the life right like you you are intern you know you you get paid to to stay in in San Francisco, and then uh, you get a great job and then you get a free food like tons of perks right like living the life right and i think everybody can like you know live the life like remote is only going to be like slightly better for us um and you know software engineering is great right i think um i i also wanted to you know mention that you know help spread the word around like you know experts as uh, we are a financial institution we are also hiring um so um if we if, if you know folks or or you know you want to end up uh, you know come experts um we are hiring um I, I'm, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to send uh, Taiyuan some information yes. um, and uh, make sure that, um, you know, we can get um, some cool folks here also. Um, yeah, and a little bit of what Express does, lah, So because most people don't know. But if you trade cryptocurrency, you sure know. Um, Express is right now um, more of like a, a fintech um, infrastructure company. So we do uh, payments, collecting, accepting and sending payments. Lah. Very simple, um, you know, sending money here and there and we have paid our integration and all these things. So um, I would say that like, you know, we are quite, uh, we, we have a good front row seat to, to, you know, FinTech in Southeast Asia. And maybe if people are interested, I'm, I'm more than happy to kind of like have a kind of a FinTech kind of centric, you know, chat uh, with folks. Yeah, but yeah, feel free to hit me up. Um, I'll, I'll send the details to Kayan. Yeah, perfect. Cool, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hang Hong, for your time. Really right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank Bye. You. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Inspirational talk. <laughs>